When most people think about dinosaur fossils, they usually envision the mere skeletons of such creatures. But just last month, scientists announced the discovery of an armored dinosaur that's so well preserved, it looks just like a statue. This week on Paleomania. Hello everyone, I'm Ryan the Raptor Guy, and welcome to this episode of Paleomania. This is a rather special episode because, as many of you probably already know, this month is... Jurassic June! And look what came in the mail! For those of you who don't know, Jurassic June is basically the celebration of any and all things dinosaur related, not necessarily just Jurassic Park or whatever, but it's any and all things dinosaur related. That's what we're dedicating this month to. It's kind of based off of May the 4th be with you for, you know, May 4th for Star Wars fans. So we Jurassic Park fans wanted to have some fun too. So we have a month devoted to dinosaurs. How cool is that? Since, since it is Jurassic June, that makes the, today's topic really appropriate, I would think. Say the word dinosaur fossils, and people usually envision the skeleton of a Tyrannosaurus in the midst of a museum hall or a sauropod skeleton towering over museum guests. Since fossils are so commonly associated with just skeletal remains, it's often easy for people to forget that there was actually skin and flesh and over the bones. It wasn't just the bones of these animals. These animals were living creatures. However, this wasn't the case with the recently discovered nodosaur fossil discovered in a Canadian mine a few years ago. Notosaurs were a family of Upper Cretaceous armored dinosaurs that lived during the Antediluvian Epoch from around 6,000 to 4,350 years ago. Notosaurs were medium-sized herbivorous dinosaurs, and in many ways, they were quite similar to the Ankylosaurs. But what makes the Notosaurs unique is, unlike the Ankylosaurs, they don't have a tail club at the end of their tail, but they have these long spikes jutting out from the sides of their bodies and their shoulders. The ones on the shoulders were especially long. And they would have been used to protect the animal from predators like tyrannosaurs and dromaeosaurs or raptors. Virtually every part of a notosaur's body was covered in armor. Not only the spikes, but the rest of the body was covered in bony plates called osteoderms. Even the notosaur's eyelids were hardened. That's how well protected these animals were. In 2011, a heavy equipment operator named Sean Funk was doing routine work in a Canadian mine in Alberta, Canada, when he stumbled across a very strange discovery. As he was working, he noticed that some of the rocks were a slightly different color and texture than the other rocks. When Sean Funk and the other miners figured out that they were looking at fossils, they contacted the Royal Tyrell Museum to come and take a look. It took six years for the fossils to be extracted from the surrounding rock so they could be brought to the museum for study. It was only when the fossils were brought back to the museum that scientists realized just how exquisite they were. When I first saw the picture of the fossil they found, I, my first thought was, oh, that, that looks like a pretty nice artist depiction. I wonder what the real fossil looks like. So I scrolled down the page and lo and behold, that wasn't the artist's depiction. That was the actual fossil. Needless to say, I was blown away by just how well preserved this thing is. And I've seen a lot of fossils in pictures in my time. Usually, when a notosaur died, the osteoderms and spikes would fall off when the skin became disconnected from the rest of the body. But that wasn't the case with this animal. They were still attached in their life positions. In addition to that, the fossil also preserves patches of fossilized skin and what might be the animal's last meal before it died. It'll take more research before we actually know what this particular notosaur was eating before it died, but notosaurs are known to have eaten low-growing plants like cycads, and ferns, and shrubs. When scientists first started excavating the fossils of this notosaur, they originally thought they were dealing with a species of marine reptile, such as an ichthyosaur or a plesiosaur. Why? Well, because the rock that they were digging this animal out of was marine rock. So this is water lane sediments, not just water lane sediments, but ocean deposits. 
So what on earth is a nodosaur, a land-dwelling herbivorous dinosaur, doing in marine rocks? Seems like we just talked about this in the last episode. Is it just, is it just me or am I sensing a pattern here? Secular scientists hypothesized that the dinosaur died inland and was washed out to sea. Either it had already died before it was washed out to sea by a flooding river or it died in a river. Anyway, somehow it got in the river and then it got swept out into the ocean. The scientists suggest that after the nodosaur was swept out to sea, it would have bloated and floated for a little while before eventually sinking down to the seafloor. Apparently, it hit the seafloor pretty hard because around the fossil nodosaur, we actually find the impact crater. And then they hypothesize that it just so happened to fall in a little place on the seafloor with little or no oxygen. That way scavengers wouldn't come and eat it up and then it would have a chance to be slowly covered by sediment really slowly until eventually it was all covered and then was able to be fossilized. It doesn't take an expert with a PhD to figure out the flaws in that story though. How often do land animals get washed out to sea? Or hey, you know, how often do animals swim out to sea anyway and die there? How often does, how often does that really happen? If this were just an isolated instance, I'd say, okay, then it, it's plausible the animal could have gotten washed out to sea, or maybe it swam out to sea for some reason and it died. But as I, as I talked about in the last episode, finding dinosaurs in marine sediments is a common phenomenon in the fossil record. As a matter of fact, most dead animals out in the ocean, they will float for a while, and that's when scavengers will come and eat up a lot of their remains. And the first thing to go is usually lots of the skin. And you know what? Let's just assume that it didn't get eaten by scavengers before it reached the sea bottom. The problem with that is there aren't very many oxygen-free environments on the sea floor. <laughs> but you know what? Let's just assume it just so happened to fall in this rare spot where there was no oxygen on the sea floor. Let's assume that actually happened. There's a problem with that too. Believe it or not, there are actually microbes, including bacteria, that thrive in oxygen-free environments. As a matter of fact, some of these bacteria, if they're exposed to any oxygen whatsoever, they die. This, this is another just-so story that evolutionists often like to tell in order to explain fossils. God's word gives us a much simpler and much easier to believe explanation as to how this nodosaur ended up in marine deposits. The Genesis Flood! As the floodwaters encroached upon the continents, dinosaurs, such as this nodosaur, would have scrambled to higher ground in order to escape. Eventually, this nodosaur could no longer escape, and it was swept out into deeper water, where it was rapidly buried before scavengers could get to it. It would remain buried in those marine rocks until 2011, when it would be discovered by miners and shock the entire scientific world. Instead of showcasing how a dinosaur was supposedly washed out to sea and just so happened to be buried in the right place at the right time, this nodosaur fossil is a wonderful reminder of the Genesis Flood and its effects on the entire world. Thank you for watching this week's episode of Paleomania. Please be sure to give this video a thumbs up, subscribe below for more content just like this, follow me on Instagram, and remember, every fossil has a story to tell, and have a... Happy Jurassic June! See you next time!